I guess that Keisha says her fiance Jaquan went from calling her a dime when they first met to telling her during sex that her body looked like she has a plumber's belly. Oh. Lakeisha says Jaquan has destroyed her self-esteem and she's here for my help. Everyone, please welcome Lakeisha to the show. Can I have a hug? How are you doing, beautiful? I'm feeling fabulous. Well, first of all, let's start with the good stuff. You and Nina Parker collection. I, I asked Nina, was like, I'm dressing your guest. Thank okay. you. <laughs> How do you feel, good? I feel fabulous. You look fabulous. I feel you like look I could... fabulous. Thank Every you. Bit. Okay, so when I read what was going on in your relationship, I did get emotional. Okay. Because whether it's physical abuse, emotional abuse, um, it, it hurts. And what you experienced was abuse for the man that you love to say such horrible things about you. Yeah. Tell me about your fiance and how you first met. So um, about four years ago, I met him um, online. Mm -hmm. In the messages, he was like, you're so beautiful, you know, could I take you out, you know, all of that. And on my bio, I did say that I had two children. And normally this is not a question I ask, but for context, what size were you at that point? Now, because you've had two children, your body is beautiful no matter what, but what size were you? I want to say about 140. Okay. And right. now, I mean, I'm about 200. You look um, good there and you look good here. Okay, let's be so very clear. Thank you. Thank you. So, you started gaining weight, and is that when things started to change with Jaquan? It definitely did. And when we were intimate, um, you know, I could just tell. I could see it in his eyes that he, you know, was fantasizing about another woman. And I, it just made me feel less of a woman. So we put up the photo and the audience had a response, and I think we all know the response. It's because <sighs> it's interesting when somebody feels like they have the authority to say things to other people when, and I don't want to fat shame him or tell him that, you know, or, ch or challenge his body, but, like, if your body, is, if you're not in the gym 14 hours a day, then you, you know, you, and even at then, you don't have the right to talk about anybody's body, but... with the wide back. So what, what, what does he say about your weight? I have a plumber's body. So when he calls you those names, what do you do? It makes me feel less of a woman. Especially, let me just tell you this, we were on the road to getting pregnant and I was on hormones. And that makes you, you know, gain weight. It makes you moody. Yeah. And, um, you know, it's like, what do you want? Do you want a child or do you want this, this perfect, woman, you know, he would make little small remarks. I know just last night he was saying if I dare go in for seconds or thirds of a meal, he would um, say, hey, yeah, I already know that that's what you want. All right, so tell me about the text message you found from other women. Um, the, the text messages that I saw of other women were, oh, you have a nice body. It's always body. The key word is body. You have a nice body. And it just makes me a little insecure. Yeah. I, I already battle from uh, low self-esteem and my image due to you know my past, my childhood. My mother always teased me for being you know bigger, and I just it just hits home for me to to hear that from someone that I want a future with. And so knowing that he has a problem with sex and other women, why haven't you left? I haven't left because when we met, I was at a, a, a hard point in my life. I was actually homeless when we met, and he took me and my two children in. He just, he took us in when I was in a dark place. So what do you feel like is on the line for you? He needs to uplift me as a woman mm -hmm. and just do that, do that for me. And if he can't? I'm gone. Okay. I'm gone. Got it. Jaquan has been listening backstage, and I want to invite him out right now. Jaquan, come on out. Hey, Jaquan, how you doing? Hey, how's it going? Good, good, good. Please, take a seat. Thanks for joining us. Check your hand, man. So, Lakeisha says you disrespect her. We heard the things that you've said about her during intimacy. What do you have to say? She came to me. She was like, let's go do this fitness boot camp. I'm like, I'm down. Let's do it. Well, she lasts for like two weeks. The first week, she did the whole time. The second week, she went like three days. I want to also make clear that when it comes to an emotional state and it comes to your weight or being motivated, if the person who has destroyed your motivation then tries to rebuild it, it doesn't work that way. If you've already said something that's hurt her self-esteem, you being the one to then try to build her up in the moment is never going to work because you can't play both roles in her life. 
because emotionally and mentally, she's still in the place where you've hurt her. So you said that she was once a dime, which she still is a dime. I mean, the way just like, I don't know, it just kind of got out of hand. So I tried to get us, like I said, to go to the gym. But let's speak on this, because outside of this, let's be real. Yes, you're saying that you tried to go to the gym and saved it, but you then sexed other women and, and talked about your girl to the other woman, which is disrespectful on many ends. Did that happen? And what do you have to say about it? Yeah, I've told some women, I'm like, oh, you got a nice body and this and that. Yeah, I would say that. I wouldn't necessarily just sit up there and fat shame her like that to but people. What would you do? Because I've seen the only people that I've done that to. Do you want a dime or do you want a baby? Do you want a dime or do you want a baby? My parents. Period. I did not do that to oh, So you other did that women. to you with your parents? I did it with my parents, yes, definitely. I told them what, what was going on. I'm gonna I can't lie to you, brother. That's even worse for me. Like, you know, it's like because and then, it's, it's one thing for, like, the randos, which is disrespectful on its own, but your mother and father have to respect your partner. Say what your point is. If you know you want to better yourself and look better, work out and go to the gym. It wasn't me but tearing you down this. when I was saying it. It was me encouraging this. you. I don't need this. Do you really think that was encouragement? On my end, yes, I do. I'm not why, running why, fast why enough. I'm not lifting enough. Because I'm trying to get your mental state. Why do you believe the way that you're talking to her and the things that you've done in that moment You're were talking about the main things are going to the gym. Which the part? gym. The way the that gym. you said that you were talking well, to her. Well, yeah, because I mean... Because every time she said you told her, you're not doing it right, you're not running fast enough, you've agreed. I've seen your body mo motions and you've yeah. nodded your head. Yeah, I agree. Why do you believe that's encouragement? I guess I feel that's encouragement because that's how... I was taught in the gym. That's how people motivated me. We motivate each other differently, as I see now, but that's how I was motivated. Okay, so, great. so I'm going off of what I So you I just learned. said the key words, I see it now, which means you realize now that that was disrespectful and not yes. motivation. Yes, yes. Can you acknowledge to your woman right now and say, I'm sorry I disrespected you and not motivated you? I'm sorry for disrespecting you, and I would love to motivate you better and how you would want me to motivate you. You can't so motivate you... I just said but... to say, I'm sorry for disrespecting you. <laughs> no. You can't motivate her. But I just want you to say, I'm sorry that I disrespected you when I thought I was motivating you. That's it. I'm sorry for disrespecting you when you thought I was motivating you. Okay, well, is this gonna last two days and then go back to the same thing? Because you're known for having a pattern, right? No, it's right. not gonna last but two days. But can I say days. something? No, yes, you can, always. Since you have a pattern too, though. Because I, your, I your pattern is forgiving someone who is blatantly disrespecting you mm. again and again and again. Mm -hmm. He has already shown you who he is, yet you're saying you still want to have a family with him. How will he re react if your kids get sick, if you get sick? If he can't handle you gaining weight during this process of trying to have a child, what if something happens later in life and you really depend on him to get your groceries because you can't get out of bed, but everything is so aesthetic? I have to be honest, I'm less concerned about him and more concerned why you continue to allow someone to treat you in a way that you know that you don't deserve to be treated. You have to love you and set your own boundaries. Everybody else follows. Mm. That's, that's real right there. Why, why is that? I feel like I owe it to him because he took me in when I was in a dark place. Listen, relationships are through thick and thin. But if he only wants you while you thin, girl, you gotta leave him when you thin. Right. Nina, I'm sorry. Mark, I'm sorry, girl. Y'all just got to I told y'all Nina gonna take y'all to church. Did you hear what she said? And this is in all sincerity. Yeah. That is real, Nina. Thank you. Daquan, do you want to say this question? You... Yeah, I do want to say it. Why? Because I really do genuinely love her and want to be there for her. her. I love her personality. I love that I can talk to her about any and everything. She's always there for me. Now, better question is, what does love mean to you? Love means someone you can lean on if you fall down and need help with Do you me. think she can lean on you? Because she just said, during her trying to have your child, she gained weight. And instead of supporting her through that and letting her lean on you, you made the decision to disrespect her, to sex other women, to talk about her weight to your mother and father. You did that when she was supposed to be able to lean on you. So how is it that you can say here that you love her when you just told me by definition of love, you're not showing it? What's making you emotional right now? Because I hear you say a word like, wait, I don't have low self-esteem. I'm beautiful, but I, just, I don't know. It's just a weight thing. It just is a trigger for me. Yeah, I, I hear you.
I hear you. And self-esteem as a woman is more than thinking you're beautiful. It's also knowing what you deserve. Duquan, right. I'm going to ask you a decision. Can you commit to not disrespect her anymore? Yes, I can commit to that. You can commit to that? Yes. Okay. Can you commit to give her space to be able to lean on you if y'all do go forward? Yes. Okay, then. So you've heard the commitments. Thank you so much. I'm going to ask you to leave my stage. Okay. Thank you. I appreciate you for being here. You're beautiful. Nice to meet you. Thank you. The reason I asked Nina to bring you on stage and the reason I asked Jaquan to leave is because there's no resolution that I can have with him. And Nina brought up a very good point. And the point is, is that it's the work that you got to do. The work you got to do. Okay. Because he can give us a show right now and say, yes, I'm going to do it. Yes, I'll do these things. But the thing is, is that he's already shown you who he is. And you have to get to a place where you can believe it and you can make better decisions for yourself. His definition of love means I can lean on somebody. And when I questioned him about him, you being able to lean on him, he didn't have no answer. Exactly. And I'm not here to say whether you should stay or go, because I think everybody's relationship. I'm going to say it. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> okay, girl, you finish your piece. I'm going to tell her. Well, I'm, you okay? know. I'm, you know how I am on our conversations. Well, you know, I'm just trying to stay in my lane. Okay. But, <laughs> <laughs> what I will say is I, whether you decide to stay or go, I think what you have to establish is, what am I looking for? Mm. If you want a partner, you got to be a partner to yourself. Mm. Yes. Because there's no way on God's green earth, yes. I'm going to be as vulnerable as I am going to be when I'm intimate with somebody. And if you can't respect me at my most vulnerable, you do not deserve any part mm. or any access to me. Yes. Ever. Amen. Yes. Ever. That is it. That is it. Listen, I brought Nina up here because I wanted you to be surrounded by people who see you and love you and not be somebody who's going to cloud your judgment. I want you to look at me, big brother over here, your big sister over here. This ain't it. And I know you felt indebted and I know you fell in love and I know that he got into your self-esteem and got into your mind. What I'll tell you is this. I had a relationship that was abusive verbally and I, it took me a really long time to leave. And... It was someone that I loved. And what people don't talk about is sometimes when you're being abused, yeah. in the movies, they leave and they go away. But in real life, you still love this person. Mm -hmm. So you're yeah. you struggle with that disrespect because you genuinely love them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But what you have to make a decision is, am I going to drown loving this person or am I going to swim to shore and save myself because I love myself more? I'm going to ask you this. I'm going to ask you this. Can you make a commitment to yourself to swim and save yourself? I'm scared. I Don't know be scared. You are. So what do you need? Are you in to... therapy? I'm not. I want to join therapy. Okay. Uh -huh. So that if I offer you some therapy, do you think that would be a good first step? Yes. So if that's your first step, girl, let's take that first step together. Okay? No man should ever feel entitled to talk about your body, yeah. and especially during sex, when he has the audacity to look at your beautiful body when you're trying to give him a child and to say something about your body, hell no, you don't deserve that from him, no other man. And so I'm gonna tell yes. you clear in point, he is not the one. She looking at me. You looking at me? Nina, tell her. Nina. I, I, I do not believe there is anything about this situation that looks like love. Ooh, oh, say it. Love is something that feeds you and fills you up. You don't yeah. feel depleted. Yes. And where there, there are ebbs and flows with all kinds of love, but one thing is constant. And there should never be a question about respect. And there should, you should not be looking to him to fill you up. Amen. That's not his job. That's your job. Amen. You got it? Okay. I'm going to get you that therapy. And we are rooting for you. Great and time. I got your back when it comes to this first step. Just after you take this first step, keep walking, okay? You got this. Thank you. You got, you got this. this. Thank you. Beautiful. You got this. All right, I love you. Hold on. Where are you going? I'll tell you where you're going. Right here to subscribe and right here to watch more. Period.